Good evening, everyone. Today we are talking about the Bupritial artery aneurysm. The anatomy of the Bupritial artery is the continuation of superficial femoral artery after passing through a ductal hiatus at end at the lower border of the Bupritial muscle. Uh, if we have encountered the Bupritial artery at the Bupritial fossa, we will find in the first uh, tibial nerve and the Bupritial vein and Bupritial artery related to the bone and present in the phantom. Uh, we have also branches for the pubesial artery. We have uh, superior, inferior, medial, lateral, uh, genital branches, and uh, we have uh, short branches and connection. This connection is uh, about um, the anastomosis around the knee. We have connection with the deep femoral artery, uh, descending uh, branch, hamstring branch, we have connection from the anterior tibial artery, recurrent branch for the anterior tibial, and the branches of the pubesial artery in the form of um, superior medial and lateral, inferior medial and lateral genicular, and uh, we have also uh, branches uh, related to the shorter branch and uh, lower descending hamstring branch. All of them are uh, connection or anastomosis around the knee. In this picture, we have found the femoral artery, lateral uh, femoral circumflex, and the branch to hamstring, the bristle artery, giving a superior uh, medial inferior medial genital branches, and the current branch from the anterior tibial artery uh, to form the anastomosis. How to suspect uh, the bristial aneurysm? All the age patients with diabetes, hypercholesteremia, hypertension, male gender, and smoking history. So, this is the atherosclerosis respirator. Intermittent claudication in young patients during the sternus exercise with absence of the history and sign of the atherosclerotic disease. So it may be intermittent. Intermittent claudication in middle-aged male patients with association of painful mouth sores and genital sores, inflammation of part of eyes and arthritis. Uh, Bustle mass in the previous pulsa found during a physical exam may be basic disease. So what are the signs? The distal pulse may be diminished or absent, and the ankle brachial index is decreased. Those with thromboembolism either present uh, with microemboli, Bluetooth syndrome, or with frank and acute ischemia. What are the etiology? Or was the etiology of this disease? Atherosclerosis, old age, diabetes, hypertension, and hypercholesteremia, mobility entrapment, inflammation based, trauma, knee operation, and infected emboli. Uh, short notes about uh, Bobrisian entrapment syndrome. It is a functional compression of the neurovascular structure located in, in the Bobrisian fossa by the surrounding musculotendinous structure, leading to vascular and neurogenic symptoms. Intermittent codication in a young patient during sternus exercise with the absence of the history and signs of the atherosclerotic disease. Obliteration of the beta pulse on examination with aggressive blunt infection has also been reported. So we have a five types of the Bobita uh, entrapmentum. This is the normal course of the vein, artery, and needle head of gastrocnemius. Type 1, Bobita artery running medial to the medial head of gastrocnemius, and this is this picture. Type 2, medial head of gastrocnemius laterally attached. This picture is lateral attachment of the medial head of gastrocnemius. Type 3, accessory slip of the gastrocnemius muscle fibrous tendon arising from the medial head of the gastrocnemius. Type 4, pubesial artery passing below the pubesial muscle fibrous tendon arising from the pubesial and making compression or partial compression. Type 5, primary venous entrapment. Uh, so, what the management or the treatment, operative treatment by release of the entrapping anomalous head of the gastrocnemius muscle, anomalous panda or associated structure has become widely accepted in both symptomatic and asymptomatic patients. And then repair of the pubesial artery with interposition graft if needed. This is the proximal pubesial artery. This is the dissected accessory step of the medial gastrocnemius head. And this is the lateral gastrocnemius head. Um, returning to our main lecture and subject instance and association of the pubesial artery aneurysm. Pubesial artery aneurysm is the second most common arterial aneurysm. Most common is a fusiform shape. High incidence with amputation for symptomatic pubesial artery aneurysm up to 40%. One third of the patients are asymptomatic, two thirds of the patients are symptomatic with chronic or acute ischemia, 
and we have low risk of rupture. Bilateral pubesal arteriosclerosis is found in 50%. Extra pubesal aneurysm has association in patients with single pubesal artery aneurysm 40% to 75%. It has extra pubesal aneurysm or association. Bilateral in 70 to 90%. Most common is an aortic aneurysm and association. Take a patient 70% symptomatic with pain and ischemia, claudication, wrist pain, and embolization. Less frequent is compression of the vein, sciatic nerve, including pain or feeling of fullness, or pressure in the pubesal fossa and leg swelling. Associated aneurysm, aortic aneurysm, femoral aneurysm, rupture, low risk of rupture 5%. Diagnosis physical examination by slide mass in the pubesal fossa. The distal pulse may be diminished or absent. Microembly Bluetooth syndrome or flank acute ischemia. Double center sound will establish the diagnosis and confirm the presence of the thrombus in the aneurysm, causing partial or complete thrombosis of the pubesal artery, as in this picture. CT angiography will establish the diagnosis and confirm the extent of the aneurysmal disease. It will also show concomitant aneurysm in the femoral aorta, presence or absence of the thrombus, quality of the runoff. Contrast arteriography in patients with acute ischemia thrombosis is usually attempt to improve the runoff and the chance of long-term success of revascularization. MRA can give good information of the inflow outflow vessels as well as thrombus burden. It can diagnose pubesal entrapment. So what is the management? Factors that determine the graft patency and limb salvage, anatomy and size of the pubesal artery aneurysm, presence of the symptoms, patency of the runoff. Indication of treatment, symptomatic pubesal artery aneurysm, some condition in asymptomatic patient. In the first asymptomatic pubesal artery aneurysm, indication of the surgical intervention, when the aneurysm size is more than 2.5 cm pubesal aneurysm, large amount of the intraneural thrombus, presence of the tibial disease or thrombosis, rapid rate of growth. A retrospective study showed 30 to 60 percent of the asymptomatic pubesal artery aneurysm becomes symptomatic over the time. Asymptomatic plus high risk patient may get benefit of endovascular management. Repair of asymptomatic pubesal artery aneurysm has results superior to intervention after ischemic symptomatic development. Types of the intervention open surgery, mild to moderate ischemia, thrombosis, severe ischemia, open surgery. When we have thrombosis of the sac, aneurysmectomy plus interposition graft. When we have incomplete thrombosis of tibial artery, we have to make bypass on the patent tibial vessel. Complete thrombosis of the tibialism, we can do mechanical thrombectomy, enter over the thrombosis, then bypass on the patent vessel. Rule of the thrombosis in case of the pubesal artery aneurysm. Use of the thrombotic therapy in treatment of pubesal artery aneurysm has a strong appeal sense the most frequent cause of reconstruction failure is thromboembolic occlusion of the outflow. Visual received thrombosis has less occlusive complication and amputation rate in comparison to non using it. Intraoperative thrombosis is of value to restore this turn off before bypass in glacial aneurysm presented with acute limb threatening ischemia. Types of an open intervention bypass with proximal and distal ligation. Advantage easy operation. Disadvantage progressive enlargement could be happening due to collateral feeding. Thrombosed large pubesal artery aneurysm is liable for infection. Aneurysmectomy when end to end as with end to end anastomosis or interpositioning graft. The graft either in situ reverse stalfenacin, preferred for long bypass with tibial anastomosis, or BCFE. Some preferred it for the short bypass and had a comparative term result with saphenous vein. And this is the picture for the interpositioning graft. Media approach or posterior approach. Media approach for large pubesal artery aneurysm extending to the proximal and distal segment, and in case of rupture pubesal artery or, or emergency. Advantage easy dissection of the tibial arteries and harvesting of the grace of venous vein. Disadvantage more liable for venous and tendon entry. Is that uh, how to make the operations? Uh, the exploration for exposure of the pubesal artery above the knee. Incision of the medial suprajunicular exposure lie along the anterior border of the sartorius muscle. With the sartorius and gracilis muscle retracted posterior, the adductor magnus muscle is separated from the semimbrous muscle to expose the pubesial vessel. 
The lateral magnus tendon can be divided to expose them, the proximal pubesial vessel completely. There is a facial, a facial connection between the distal adductor tendon and the medial intermuscular septum that must be divided to obtain exposure showing is it the fascia. And then uh, it is the artery uh, within the vascular chest, the artery must be carefully separated from the surrounding veins and mobilization must be adequate for safe exposure and may be uh, aided by the use of the soft vessel tabs. Exposure of the pubesial artery below the knee, the incision on the medium infrageneic approach, like approximately one centimeter behind the posterior border of the tibia. The proximity of the substance vein requires careful dissection, the vein usually remains with the posterior tab. After the uh, coronal fascia is incised, then, and the like medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle is extracted posteriorly, and uh, you can extend proximal by incising SGS muscles. Neurovascular model can be located deep to the proximal aspect of the incision and uh, then um, additional exposure can be obtained as we have uh, said um, this by dividing um, the attachment of the serious muscle is the distal and proximal uh, by dividing uh, SGS. First structural encounter on the entering neurovascular sheath is one of the burden of the vein. After careful dissection, the artery is elevated um, into uh, the incision using um, salt vessel tabs. Pattern is anatomical in subsarterial. What about the posterior approach? Posterior approach is uh, fit for small aneurysm limited to bupecial tosa, fast growing to control the collaterals and feeding artery, large compressive swelling in bupecial tosa, not extend proximally. Advantage easy dissection and safe, like collaterals and feeding artery, less risk of nerve and venous injury. This advantage is difficult to harvest gray venous vein, difficult to exposure of TPL. The exposure um, uh, by S shape um, uh, in the pubesial fossa in the first small softness vein is identified as subcutaneous tissue just uh, superficial to the deep fascia. The vertical incision of the deep fascia exposes the content of the pubesial space. The medial supercutaneous nerve should be divided for clear access to the major neurovascular structure. This is the medial sugar nerve, and this is the tibial nerve, pubesial vein, and pubesial artery. And uh, both are on two head of gastrocnemius muscle. Interpositioning graft for the pubesial aneurysm. Endovascular measurement for suitable anatomy, dynamic zone 2 cm, not frequent, bending knee 90 degree, able to be on colloidal grill for six weeks, high risk patient, and uh, two patent uh, distal off. Specific deployment uh, of the endograft for the pubesial artery aneurysm. Ready to colloidal grill elevation. Perform femoral puncture by a contralateral approach or epsilateral approach into the superficial femoral artery, hemorrhize it to an activated critical time for more than 250 seconds, crossing the aneurysm into the distal pubesial artery or tibial vessels with an O35 or O18 inch wire, created in a roadmap angiogram, deploy the graft from the distal to proximal landing zone, and overlap with additional graft as, uh, as needed. Overlapping graft uh, 2 to 3 mm with 1 mm size difference before a completion angiography to evaluate for endonation. In addition, angiogram with knee and extreme flexion should be performed to identify the potential area of kinking. Prescribed fluid growth to be taken post operative and differently. This lecture often um, exclusion the aneurysm by using the covered graft like my band, and the picture of aneurysm after exclusion and embedded position. An ideal stent graft for endovascular repair for pubesial artery is, is beneficial with material with low thrombogenicity, with capacity to endure stress and resist fracture or kinking, allow maximum flexibility to permit its use to cross the joint, need to have good radial force to maintain adequate steel at the point of the proximal and distal fixation to prevent the leak. Currently, the stent graft and the fluence covered stent are used most frequently for endovascular repair of the pubesial artery aneurysm. My band is expanded the BCFE neutral self expandable stent graft that has an heparin bounded BCFE surface to decrease thrombogenicity. Take home as the indication and timing of the visual aneurysm repair require a proper surgical judgment. In contrast to aortic aneurysm, the complications of the visual artery aneurysm are dimmed but not life threatening. 
In the higher special case can be made for non-operative management, however, this is less common today given the low risk of the endovascular repair. For more, most patients, active repair of the pubesial aneurysm, femoral pubesial bypass or interpositioning with autogical spin, or exclusion by stent graft is a definitive treatment and safe option. We recommend that an isolated asymptomatic pubesial artery aneurysm large enough to cause arterial tear blood. Arterial tear blood or thrombus formation be considered for operative repair. This criteria would typically include aneurysm greater than 2.5 cm. Presence of thromboembolism discovered either clinical or radiologically should be considered as a strong indicator for surgery to avoid limb loss. Repair of the asymptomatic pubesial artery aneurysm has resolved much superior than intervention after ischemic symptoms developed. Thank you very much.